Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where we strive to survive as a space engineer. Today we're going to visit the great planet Pertem. If you've never been there before, it's not that much to see. Honestly, it's like being at a big desert. It's approximately the same size as Mars, or it might be smaller. I think it actually is smaller. And its gravity is not that intense. Well, what makes it difficult is not only the fact that it's so far away from all the other planets, but its surface itself has pretty much no ice. So, if you start out on this planet, it'd be pretty tough to actually make it off the planet using a hydrogen thrust system, but it is possible. There is ice on the planet, but you have to go searching for it. Today I'm using my crawler with the built-in jump drive. If you haven't seen this video yet, this is a small ship scale block system with an actual jump drive that allows me to do about 2,000 kilometers per jump. That's not bad. The average large ship, even if you made it a very small large ship, can only do about 500 to 600 kilometers. As we approach this planet, you can see it's primarily just tan. There's nothing there. There's a lot of limestone and sand. We're not going to spend too long on it, though, because even though right now I don't have any enemies on my radar or anything, some could pop up. And the most treacherous thing about this planet are the storms. I have yet to visit this planet without having a problem with the electrical storms. Before you know it, you're just sitting there making a build, maybe checking out the sites, and here comes a crazy storm. Looks like a tornado in the distance, just wallowing through, trying to hit you at any point. And the lightning will kill you. It may seem like we're a long ways from the planet still, but I promise you, it's just the way the planet is. It does not have a very high atmosphere. So your atmospheric thrusters are a bit difficult to operate if you go over a certain altitude. Otherwise, its gravity is low enough, it's not going to burn up all your hydrogen if you have to use the hydrogen instead. For this type of planet, I think the crawler is perfect because the areas are not that difficult to maneuver with a rover and the atmosphere is kind of low. So even though you can use atmospheric thrusters, it's so much easier just to drive on the surface. That is, unless a big storm comes up, then you might want to take off a little bit faster. Now, as I head towards the planet, you may or may not be able to see that there are little green patches. I mean, as I get closer, it'll be more evident, but those little green patches contain ice under them. Primarily, that is the only place you will find ice on this rock. There's no cool resources like platinum or uranium or anything like that. Ice is pretty much scattered about. But if you're looking for a good place for cobalt or, you know, maybe a desolate place that you can just kick back and relax and waste time in the game, go for it. This might be a great base, who knows? Except for the crazy storms. I've actually had in the past where when I used light armor blocks and I was standing underneath them, the lightning had blown through the light armor blocks and still hit me. So if you're going to do anything like that, I'd recommend putting some heavy-duty armor blocks up, or simply dig into the ground. The gravity affected us approximately 9,000 to 10,000 feet, or 9,000 to 10,000 meters. And you can see it's not that strong when we get to that point. I do have my atmospheric thrusters on, so we'll see what altitude we have to be at before they'll actually kick in. I 
I'm trying to aim for that cluster over there that looks a little green, those two dots on the upper side. There is a larger one to the right side, but to do that, I'd have to throw my thrust sideways and it'd probably waste more resources than what it's really worth. So for now, I'm just going to try to go straight for these two dots. Plus, it's a bit of a canyon, so usually in a lower line areas, you'll have a high enough atmospheric oxygen level to breathe. Right now, we're at 1600 and we don't have any. Yeah, I'm primarily having to use all this hydrogen thrust. I'm not quite sure when the atmospheric thrust is going to kick in, but it should seem like it'd kick in around 500 meters at least. Oh, there it is. It was just under 500 meters. You can kind of see them fluctuating right now. It'd be pretty risky if you're trying to fly over any type of mountainous rocks because you'll run out of atmospheric thrust pretty quick. This is an interesting planet in that it has a bunch of shrubs and bushes everywhere. But it doesn't have much of anything else. There's no ice. There's no obvious resources available. You know, it's, they don't stick out of the ground too often. It's almost like being in Arizona, if you've ever gone to Arizona. The gravity here is 1.2 G, which is kind of high it is higher than what triton was but it doesn't go up that high because remember at 8000 meters we were only at 0.3 g's now this looks like a good spot here we managed to get pretty close to it and we already saw that the ice indicated on our radar there it is you don't have to dig very far down to get to it luckily it's only going to be about 5-10 meters once you're directly on top of it. But it is pretty scarce. On this planet, I would definitely rely on wind power rather than trying to use any hydrogen engines. Or if you have nuclear, that's great. But when you're first starting out, that's not very probable. Looks like a pretty clear night sky out here. One solid tree. That's interesting. So this must be where the ice is. Six meters at this point. Maybe we should cruise around and see what else is around here. The mountains appear to be mostly a limestone texture. Which means that your resources for that are not going to be very dense. It's not like the hard stones found on other planets that give you a lot of iron, nickel, and silicone. Instead, these ones are going to be kind of sparse. Oh, there's another green patch there. I think while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and fill up my ice load and see if we can recharge our hydrogen before a storm rolls in. At night, I haven't seen too many storms, but as soon as daybreak happens, there's definitely going to be some activity.
Oh, look at there. We can see three different planets at the same time. Oh, that's what I was talking about. See that huge tornado of a storm in the distance there? We better get the heck out of here. That thing will actually rip you to shreds. I've lost small ships like crazy with those things. I'm going to book it. Notice I turn on my atmospheric thrusters forward in order to push us a little bit faster. Those storms can move pretty quick and be on top of you within minutes. Now I think that's all the time we're going to spend on this place. Let's see if we can outrun this storm and survive. Yep, still back there. It's kind of crazy. When you're visiting, it's easy to get away from it because you know you're not going to make a permanent location here. But when you're trying to make a permanent location, I definitely suggest putting it underground or in the side of one of these mountains or something. Because this it gets very treacherous. I guess maybe we should just get over this hill out of this valley. It might help us. It's not too bad of a layout, though. There's a lot of desert area. There's sparse areas that will contain ice, but pretty easy to build. If you look at the canyon over there, you could even build in that low-lying canyon and have a lot higher oxygen level. Well, that's about it for this planet. If you ever dare to venture here, make sure you bring plenty of resources. Especially oxygen. If you build too high, you'll probably run out. Otherwise, leaving the planet is not that difficult. We were able to do the atmospheric thrusters to about 2,000 meters, and then that's pretty much there is no atmosphere after that, and we're just cruising on hydrogen from there on out. But unlike Triton, the gravitational field actually dropped pretty quick because we're, we're only at a half a G or approximately a half a G now and easily climbing away from the planet. It would be cool if you were moving from away from the planet, if you could see some of the storms brewing. That way, when you're initially landing on the planet, you won't get struck as hard. I think there's some sort of enemy that hangs out here from time to time, too. I remember in the past that I was actually attacked, and I had to flee in a hurry. Well, I guess it's about time to return to our home base. We've checked out every planet and moon in the solar system. As always, thanks for watching. And I hope you share this video with other individuals. And add your own comments and notes to it.